It's the end of the month, and you know what that means. It's time for In Case You Missed It, where I share several offbeat, interesting stories from around the world. Most of these stories won't be dealing with paranormal events, but who says they have to? So let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. This is In Case You Missed It for September 2021. Our first story takes us to Florida, where at a car dealership, a woman was caught in the back seat of a Jeep relaxing. And that's our story. All right, you guys know it's Florida, and you know it's never something simple with those folks. And this time is no exception. The woman, whose name is Alexis, was in the back seat of the Jeep naked. Not only was she naked, according to reports, she had her legs open and was pleasuring herself. The manager and receptionist who caught her in the act told her to get the heck out of there, and then the police were called. She was charged with burglary of an unoccupied convenience, criminal mischief, unlawful exposure of sexual organs, and giving a false name. And to top it off, reports said that there was a red colored stain found on the seats of the Jeep. Yep, Alexis left a memorable parting gift. Reports said that Alexis caused $1,300 worth of damage to a vehicle. So if you're in the market for a new car, I think I know one that'll go dirt cheap. And it even has unique red spots in the back. Moving all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast, we find ourselves in my home state of California. Now, many people consider shaman to be wise, spiritual, and connected to the world in ways we average folks will never truly comprehend. Now, let's meet Alexandra. Alexandra is a self-proclaimed shaman who is not wise, probably not spiritual, and is only connected to the world when she takes a puff. Alexandra was arrested and is being accused of starting a wildfire that destroyed 41 homes and 90 small structures. Alexandra claims to have been hiking to Canada the day after a wildfire started. On her hike, she got thirsty and happened to cross bear urine. She decided to drink the bear urine, but not before purifying it. Alexandra said she gathered wood to start a fire and tried to ignite it, but the wood was too wet and she decided to drink the urine without purifying it. Alexandra went on her way and then got caught up in some brush. She called the fire department for help. When they got there, they asked if Alexandra could empty out her pockets and fanny pack. She complied. And upon emptying them, they found two CO2 canisters, a lighter, and a leafy green substance of which she claimed to have smoked earlier. So, did she start the wildfire? I have no clue. Really, my mind is thinking about one thing. Did they ask her to describe the taste of bear urine? Because I'm curious what she says it tastes like. Next, we're headed to Brazil, where we have a case of who didn't see this coming and why are you surprised? Maria Olympia Ribeiro Pancheco is a Brazilian prosecutor who did a big no-no. She shared posts pushing Nazi propaganda on her Facebook page. The posts included swastikas, Nazi posters, and positive messages that support Hitler. Remember now, this is a prosecuting attorney for Brazil. It has also come to light that she's part of a far-right conservative group that supports the philosophies of Alavo de Carvalho. I'm sure I butchered that name. Now, what's the kicker to all of this? Maria's father, who was a police director, was called Hitler Mussolini Dominguez Pancheco. Imagine what you have to do to be called 
Hitler Mussolini openly. So yeah, if people were expecting the apple to fall far from the tree, then I have a bridge to sell them. It also comes with a river. In Denmark, the Kusten Museum of Modern Art asked artist Jeans Hanning to recreate two of his previous works, 2010's An Average Danish Annual Income and An Average Austrian Annual Income, which first was exhibited in 2007. The art used real cash to show the incomes of everyday people in the two countries. Well, Jens took the job, and when it came time to show his work, boy did he. Kind of. Jens was given the equivalent of $84,000 to create the art, and the art he turned in was two white canvases that said, take the money and run. While on the surface this appears to be a con job, it's technically not one, at least not yet. According to the contract the museum has with Hanin, the money used for the art is to be returned by January 16th, 2022. If it's not given back by that date, then things will get real. So hopefully Jens doesn't take his artistic advice and run away with the money. So we started with the nut in a car and let's end with the nut in a car. Now back in the States, this next story comes from Fargo, North Dakota. Bill Fisher has a nice truck. He loves his truck, a Chevy Avalanche. It's a Chevy, what's not to love? However, as it turns out, Bill's not the only one who loves his truck. A red squirrel loves the truck as well. Of course, not in a romantic way, but loves it for its storage capacity. In just a few days time, the red squirrel stashed hundreds of black walnuts in Bill's truck, over 42 gallons worth. I had to pull the fenders off and clean out all the walnuts out and thought I had them all and took it down the road, turned the corner and found one rolling inside the windshield where the wipers go, said Bill. This is the work of one red squirrel, he continued. And when I think I get them all, another nut comes rolling around. Unfortunately for the red squirrel, all his work was for naught and he'll have to restock for winter once more and elsewhere. And that concludes In Case You Missed It for September 2021. Thank you all for tuning in. And if you have your own offbeat, oddball, interesting story, please feel free to share it with us in the comment section down below or share it with us on social media. And remember to follow us on social media while at it. And that is Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and Instagram. And those links can be found in the description below. Thank you all again for watching. And we will be seeing you in October.